Hello everyone, Ram McK here and welcome to welcome back to part five of Iconia Devere in Skyrim. I was foolish and naive. A Wayla Janel. What does that mean? I was so foolish for so long. Instead of all the fear of getting close to you, I should have been with you. I've wasted too much time with my doubts and insecurities. I would have thought I'd be over such things by now. Well, the past is over and the future is ahead of us. Yes, you're right. Let's make it a good one then. Come, my Miranda sins. I asked you once long ago if you saw any future for us. Now that it has come closer, have you changed your mind on it? Do you even see one for you? For us? Of course I do. I do too. I'm getting used to this world. Somehow you excite me, stir my loins, and make me feel safe all at the same time. That's called love. Well, I think I can get used to this love. Hmm, I'm wondering, do you ever entertain the notion of marriage? Yes, of course. There is no such thing among the drow, as you can imagine. From what you have told me, and what I have seen, I can picture us in such a relationship. I would be honored to be your husband. Perhaps someday, my Miranda sins. But the time and place must be right. If I remember correctly, we must travel to Riften and go to the Temple of Mara and purchase an amulet. Of course, there's no rush, my dear. Aren't they? I always set some aside. I'm finding myself unable to deny your effectiveness in battle. That's high praise from a drow. I see you have learned much in your short lifespan. If I were ever to return to the Underdark, I would want you with me. I do not think that will ever happen. The pathways have been sealed. We can speak more of this later. The finest cuts? I have been thinking about us, my Miranda sins. Perhaps thinking too much. Dwelling on such things leads only to headaches and confusion. This is also part of love. I suppose you are right. It is rather annoying, but I find myself enjoying the thought of you inside my head. I think you want to make love. I think you're right. Tell me, we have wealth, a home, and many material things. Is there anything more you desire? Your friendship. Friendship? Is that all? Perhaps you had better think further on this. Your love, then. You already have that, my Miranda sins. And you shall have it forever. You make me happy, and I'm grateful. Then I'm not sure. Not sure? Does my exotic form not stir your loins? I could offer pleasures you cannot possibly imagine. Come to me, and I will show you pleasures you did not think possible. Something is bothering you. What is it, hmm? How you got here, it makes no sense. Why not? You think this world is so special, that the gods don't have the power to send things from one plane to another? If the gods can open gates between here and Oblivion, why not from here to Faerun? Or the Abyss? It is simply another plane of existence. I never thought of it that way. There are a lot of people in both worlds who think theirs is the be-all and end-all. All are surfacers. Drow are not so stupid. <laughs> I love it when you're like that. It is nice to see you smile once in a while. 
Very well, my Madame de Sins. It never bothered you how I left the Underdark, and what I had to do to survive. Why? You did what you had to do. I kept pushing you away, but you never let me succeed. You saw something in me that nobody else did, in either world. You're very special. It was worth it. Perhaps so, but I was not easy on you. I... I apologize for that. It's nothing. Forget it. I'm so very glad we bonded as lovers and friends, you and I. You are very special to me. I cannot let anything happen to you. Looking to stay alive? Why take a chance? Do you wish to hear of Blindenstone? What's that? A city in the Underdark that was founded by Sferniblin, or Deep Gnomes, over 2,000 years ago. It is now devastated and in ruins. The Sferniblin allied themselves with the Dugar during the Battle of Keeper's Dale. House Benray summoned demons and destroyed the city. That's a shame. That is the Underdark. Now the city is occupied by three separate groups. They all desire different things, so they live in relative harmony. There are drow scavengers, most of who belong to House Duskrin. They are mostly harmless unless you get in your way. There are rumors of a band of Sverniblin werewats that occupy the maze and entrance area of the city. They don't sound like a big deal. They are. They ambush and kill small parties that enter their realm. I do not know if they still exist. The third has been there for years, since before the drow attack. It is called Ogremok Spain, and is a cloud of sentient magical dust. What is that? It is an elemental. Any evil creatures it comes into contact Protect with are driven right. into a Buy mindless rage. But not you? All drow are inherently evil, but I am no longer my Morantesens. Iconia looks as if she wants to ask you something. What is it? We never got formally married. Is that something you would like, my Miranda Sins? Yes, the sooner the better, actually. We could have a ceremony performed. Do the drow have marriage rights? Not formally. In fact, marriage as you know it does not exist. We are taught to treat men as servants, or worse. Well, my Miranda Sins, you are very close now to one of your goals, yes? The hard part is yet to come. Yes, that is true. I am glad I am here to help, and I could not do this without you. I wouldn't have it any other way. You are becoming quite the lover to me, my Miranda Sins. But you still have much to learn. Maybe you can show me right now. Iconia smiles and tackles you. You know you're in for it now. I have decided I much prefer your world. Really? I'm surprised. Well, I have you, of course. But when we first met, I was always fighting this place. Now... I've come to love it. Faerun was never safe from me or any drow. Even Driss do Erden had his share of troubles. Who is that? Another drow who escaped the Underdark. After a war with another house, he cursed the drow ways and escaped Menzo Baranzen and the Underdark. I would love to meet him. I have only met him once. It is unlikely, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. I think one drow in Tamriel is enough. With two, we could take over. Oh, my Miranda Sins. You have made me so very happy. 
Huh? What did I do? You have made me put aside my past and all the hurt and pain. I didn't think it was possible. Well, I'm glad you're happy. I am as well. You have no idea. Untold pleasures await you, my love. These dragons are such a nuisance. I've never seen so many before. They have dragons in the Underdark? There were dragons above and below ground. They were far rarer than they seem to be here right now. And much tougher to kill. How so? Well, there was no dragonborn, such as yourself. And no shouts either. To kill a dragon took immense strength cunning, and fortitude. I'm not saying you do not possess those qualities, but killing a dragon there was an epic task. One blast of a dragon's breath and you were dead. Not like here. You have no idea how easy you have it here. You look like you have a question. What is it, my dear? Tell me more about what happened with you and Lolf. As I said before, when Lolf banished me here, little did I know that it had opened a portal between the two planes. Lolf was able to come through it. We had battled her once, but I knew she wasn't defeated. She never was. Lolf's power was provided from all the sacrifices the Drow made to her. She was unstoppable. Shortly after this first incident, Apparently, the other gods finally grew fed up with her, after she killed the other drow gods I mentioned earlier. Although they were drow deities, they were rarely worshipped except by rogue drow, or far-flung sex, which is why they were so weak compared to Lulf. For her actions against the other gods, she was banished to a remote part of the Underdark. Her connection to the power she was feeding from was shut off. So she grew weak? Yes, but I will continue the tale tomorrow. Are you ready for me to continue my tale? I'm listening. Loth had declined in power rapidly, despite the sacrifices by the drow priestesses. She was weak and trapped in a mortal plane by the other gods. How did you find out about that? I'll get into that later. But really, it started with my brother Valis contacting me. He somehow communicated this to me through my dreams. My lover and I mutually decided to act, at first to save Valis. We entered the Underdark through one of the open portals, a cave in the northern part of Cyrodiil. We were approached by a drow house that was sympathetic to our cause. Their wizard told us one way to convert Valis from Dritter form back to being drow. We eventually did this and brought Valis back to the surface where he was welcomed by the Mages Guild. Did their assistance come at a price? Yes, the defeat of Lulf. I will continue the tale later. Do you wish for me to continue my tale about the defeat of Lulf? Yes, please do. Lulf was an A weakened state after being banished to the Underdark by Corellin for her crimes against the other gods. The matron mother we encountered discovered this, and wished to strike Loth down before she could regain any of her power. Because Valis so willingly gave his own life for me, it was only fair that we make the attempt in exchange for saving him. So how did you pull it off? We had to return to the surface to acquire a weapon and shield of great power from Bothia. I did this myself. In exchange for the items, Bothia required me to perform many favors for her. Many were stain, or some were only deceived if they were lucky. I do not wish to go into that. It was a dark time for me. But eventually I satisfied her terms and she granted me the items. The shield protected us from her powers to turn her enemies into dritters. Without it, we surely would have been defeated and become her slaves. The sword was immensely powerful. Any other would have only wounded her. This sword was carefully crafted to work against her and her alone. 
So after that, you went all the way back into the Underdark? Yes, but I will continue the tale later. I grow tired. The journey back to the Underdark was long and always treacherous. Ah, you wish to finish the tale. Yes. We made our way back to the Matron and announced our success in locating the items. She revealed Loth's location. Loth had gone back to her temple within the city in order to regain her power. If any later, we likely would not have stood a chance. Time and luck were on our side. We entered the temple and slew many of her priestesses and her handmaiden. Once the handmaiden was killed, Loth appeared. She tried to talk us out of our mission using her guile, but it was of no use. We had made up our minds. What did she say? I remember her words vividly. You dare come here and slay my minions. Did I not spare your miserable lives before? This is how you repay me. She then whined about Corellin. Corellin constantly spits on me, and for what? He has done worse. First, me and my people's banishment, and now this. It is true that Corellin banished the drow for their deeds, but her other words were lies. She then began to admit her crimes. So I killed my son Veyron, and my daughter Elastrail. She then excused that by saying, if she hadn't taken human form and tried to kill me, she would yet live. She then began to try and get us to pity her by saying, I was once Arashni, Weaver of Destiny, the consort of Corellin before he betrayed me. Let me guess, it was she that betrayed him. Yes, the fact is that she betrayed him, not the other way around. She is evil and twists her words and deeds. She then admitted to the destruction of my home city, Chednasad. She had abandoned it, and the Dugar and the Jezra Chosin destroyed it. After a fierce battle, we killed her and freed the drow from her evil grip. Once we returned, the paths through the two planes were sealed forever. So that's the story, more or less. Remembering her words fills me with hate. Let us forget it. What I have told you, many were slain by the drow to conceal the information. You should see me what do you mean? Stranger. We found a book throughout those days during the Oblivion Crisis. It described how through deceit and domination, she won over the drow. As I've said before, the drow grew strong in the Underdark. Infiltrating and dominating the subterranean environment with zealous fervor. Loth's worship became paramount to the power-hungry, status-obsessed drow, and the Spider Queen flourished as we grew in power. It also detailed some of what is known as the Ball Crisis, that I described to you before. Loth grew to fear my power. Apparently she was afraid of me, although I cannot see why, and thus banished me to Tamriel. Loth's manipulation of the planes caused a weakness to develop. She used these new weaknesses to start building links from the Underdark to Tamriel. In fact, she was hoping to take over Tamriel as a new feeding ground for the drow. Don't think we would have survived that. Certainly not. Fortunately, the Seldarine discovered her plot. Who are they? The Upper Echelon Gods. They became tired of her war on the surface elves. The murder of many gods and all of her other schemes. The Seldarine finally tired of Loth. Corellin banished her completely to Tamriel to face justice. According to the book, this was the source of much rejoicing on the original plane, Theron. But all of Tamriel was completely unaware of this. And so the rest was history, as they say. <laughs> 